Hello, all. After such an enriching and energetic uh, keynote by Rob Gill, we hope we can keep the momentum alive. So the topic that we have today is India Digital Stack for Technology and Creative, Creativity in the New Digital Economy, and the focus will be on the uniqueness of this digital stack and the value for Web3 economy. So quick round of introductions by the panel member. You want to get started? Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gagan. Uh, I work with JM, uh, trying to build a fintech called Blinks. Uh, I have about 20 years' experience across technology and finance. Hey, hi, everyone. This is Prasad. Uh, I uh, manage digital business in Kotak Life, basically managing to keep up with the uh, change or the pace of change which is happening in the digital world. That's what I generally call it as managing digital business. So uh, that's how it is. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Midhavi, and I head the enterprise business at Critio India. Hi, again, everyone. I'm Abhijit, Abhijit Shah. I am a contable for marketing, digital business, customer experience, and the direct business for ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund in India. Thank you. Thank you. And this is Rashmi Sethi, the chief strategy officer at Merkel Link, which is a Merkel. A, at Fractic Link, which is a Merkel India company. Uh, let's get started. So talking about the India digital stack, which includes the open source network, the APIs for digital products covering identity, payments, like UPI, Aadhaar, account aggregator, is now available for countries that need that technology. I will leave the question open for anybody in the panel to answer. What do you think has been the most successful story of India's stack adoption and penetration within the country or globally? Who would want to go first? Since I came last, maybe. Sure. Thank Abhijit, you. go ahead. Yeah, so I, I'd say, uh, and you know, Gagan and Prasad are here, and this looks a very heavy FinServe kind of a model. And, uh, you know, I, I'd say the largest game changer for us as an industry especially mutual funds, has been the whole digital onboarding that the India stack provides. And, uh, you know, opening a mutual fund account was, an, was a tedious process, an onerous uh, documentation requirement, and you would go back and forth, get, get, get various stamps, signatures, papers, then people would verify that, and then, you know, there would be some kind of a cooling off period to uh, uh, give... Uh, uh, give a couple of more steps of verification. So, A, it was a large process, it was, it was difficult. At the same time, there were many friction points and, you know, people in the room uh, definitely can appreciate and understand if there are more friction, more drop-offs and uh, less conversion. But the Aadhaar-based EKYC uh, works really wonders and, and within, within a few seconds, you can actually get onboarded. So for us, that's been the real game changer, and I'm sure Gagan and Prasad can add. Yeah, so I completely agree. So from the perspective of uh, any BFSI company, today if I talk about uh, all of them, what you mentioned about Rashmi, that not just the eKYC solutioning, but uh, UPI payment, the entire uh, uh, eco ecosystem of uh, payment gateways, uh, we all have been doing digital business from last uh, almost 15 years now, but uh, the ease with which customer can today complete the journey online, that has tremendously got changed with the advent of EKYC, CKYC, uh, plus UPI as the payment. In fact, Vinod talked about it during his presentation of entire digital transformation, how that thing completely changed. I would say everything what currently we are experiencing is helping us build that ecosystem stronger from the customer perspective. Right, thank you. So, Gagan, would you like to add like how you have leveraged this? Yeah, the I think everybody has, but uh, one interesting thing is that if you look at the report summary, right, uh, not even a single slide had financial services in it, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, in the top three, we had always had the other industries, but uh, right now in this panel, three of us are financial services. I think next year we should have financial services in top three. Uh, with India Digital Stack, that is possible, right? Uh, 
uh, first time we are talking about millions of customers, right? Yeah. Uh, in uh, in securities, in mutual funds, it has always been an economy which talks about lakhs, right? Uh, in the last 25 years, you say five lakh customers, one lakh customer. Now, now they are. Uh, the digital stack has made it possible to talk about 10 million, 20 million, 25 million, right? FMCG for that, and that's the back of the hand calculation for FMCG. But financial industry is completely changing now, right? Yeah. Uh, we can build scale, right? Uh, building scale in financial services has always been a pain uh, because uh, the ROI doesn't work out without digital, right? It has been always a cost to service, right? With the, with the tech ecosystem that is possible. Uh, all parts of digital stack are critical for us. As uh, Abhijit said that whole onboarding uses Aadhaar, it uses uh, UPI, it uses all the parts. I think personally, I have always found DigiLocker to be the most fascinating. Because when I was growing up as a child, I always thought that centralized ID should be. So when Aadhaar came, I was like, finally something is happening. It was obviously shocking that nobody had done it in the world. But DigiLocker was unexpected, right? I never thought DigiLocker will come or something like that can even happen. It was beyond imagination. So I think that had changed. Even when it came, I was like, this will not work, right? But the way it has helped us in the EKYC version 2, we built a lot of stuff in, I think, 15, 16, 17, 18, with the EKYC one when Aadhaar was there. But when DigiLocker came, the way the things changed, I think has given a second big jump. So if we have to single out something which is special to me is DigiLocker. But uh, the way we have used it, uh, in my uh, industry, there's a specific thing in the securities and investments, which is not so much, I think, uh, in all the other industries, is that if you have to invest, you have to continuously transfer funds, to keep transferring funds, right? So the way we use UPI, I think, has a huge value add to us. UPI is big for all of us, right? All of us use it. But for us, it's a direct revenue value. Right? Because I think that's true for uh, everybody else. Maybe I don't know the other industries, but in investments, more U with UPI coming in the way the customer is able to transfer fund at the time of, at, mo at the moment when they want to buy a stock. And earlier, see, the, the stocks move very fast, right? You have to buy on the spot sometimes and so on. UPI makes it possible. So you are able to engage with customers with UPI much better. And for us, it's direct revenue, right? So, so in my view, UPI is a thing which we have leveraged a lot. Uh, which has given us the, the ROI and that is what is important in the long-term sustainable businesses, right? So, so that's what I can add. Uh, that's exciting. Thank you. Uh, would you want to add something, Madhavi? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think uh, Aadhaar definitely, as everyone said, paved the way uh, for this whole stack. But I think UPI really was an absolute game changer. Uh, UPI really helped to change the way digital payments was happening. And on one end, there was the government that was ensuring that more and more uh, people become bank account holders. And on the other end, there are fintech firms who are ensuring that people who do not even have a bank account are able to seamlessly do digital payments. So I think that was a very game changer thing. And also, I think COVID really accelerated it because it took four years since its inception um, for it to cross, I think, three lakh crores uh, monthly. And then within one year, from 2020 to 21, it actually more than doubled to 7 lakh crores. So I think that also has really changed, and that change is here to stay. Yeah, well, I think <clears throat> what Vidavi said about COVID, and there was a, one big WhatsApp floating, right? What transformed your, what transformed your digital journey or, or, or digitization in your organization, and the questions were CMO, CDO, CTO, or COVID-19. And mostly people answered COVID-19, right? <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, continuing with this. So, yes, pandemic has catalyzed the digital transformation across businesses. Digital has witnessed a positive growth, be it digital advertisement space, adoption of e-commerce, cashless transactions. So, traditionally, basically, creativity has been about great storytelling and concepts with some incremental innovations. What opportunities would you further explore to tap into this space? where we can create magic by leveraging data with creativity and technology. Who would like to go first? Prasad, you would want to take this? So, um, when we talk about this entire digital ecosystem and link it to the advertisement part of it, uh, what has happened over last uh, maybe seven, eight years, the data technology and the media planning, they have got very well integrated. You can 
track all the data points through the analytics, complete analytics, not just your own website, but all your advertisement placements, impressions, clicks, to purchase. Everything can be tracked so that data collection, data accumulation, insight generation was a big change. That coupled with the media planning, so many platforms have come in and uh, that has resulted into significant uh, media planning basis the data as compared to the gut feeling. That is the biggest change which has happened from that uh, media planning perspective. Today I can segment customer, go personalize, remarket, retarget, whatever I want to do with the customer base I have created, the first party data, there are so many avenues through which we can connect with the customers. But the biggest change which is yet to happen, and we are still uh, uh, working on it, that where uh, technology will aid that solutioning is the creative uh, part of it, content creation. Right? We all talked about the chat GPT at the start of the conversation. It is not about what chat GPT is doing is, was not available earlier. That information which chat GPT is currently pulling out is from search engines. Correct? That's where the entire repository of information lies. But it is currently making it more conversational. It is making it more uh, uh, apt for the user. It is giving that user experience. So that same user experience, we need to bring in, in all the creative part of it. Currently, when we talk about creativity, that creating a particular concept, a storytelling, we all, as a marketeer, start with uh, the brief, correct? There is a need for the uh, customer and to, to basically ignite that need, what kind of story I should build out of it, correct? So that's how we all start. Tomorrow, we will have another GPT, which is not chat GPT, maybe a create GPT, which will help us develop this communication basis, the brief what we are creating. It will be an additional aid to build so much of content. Currently, we say that, yes, we are in a content economy. So much of content is getting generated every day. People are consuming the content. But today, the kind of content which is getting consumed is what is thrown at you. You have not selected that content. I have seen a lot of videos on uh, YouTube where 1 million, 10 million views are there and those videos have nothing into it. It's just like one cat is jumping from one table to another table, has so many views. But people are consuming that content because that content is getting pushed to them. Tomorrow there will be a scenario where with the help of technology data, a specific content can be created by the brands with the help of that, which is real-time content, which is contextual. Today I take some time to create a contextual content, but technology will aid those things. I can write a brief to the system, to a machine saying, this is the context, this is the brief, I need an urgent creative, help me with that particular part. I think that's where the overall scenario will change and that transformation will happen. I don't remember which slide, but I think it was Vino's slides, which talked about that we have an infrastructure, we have worked on digital transformation, there was another pillar which was content. Where transformation is yet to happen, we are in that process, but if that happens, that gives so much of power to both marketeers and consumers that the overall customer experience can get amplified like nothing like it. Yeah. Yeah, so actually, 2023 you know, basically would be a year where you transform this in the entire customer journeys. Yeah, I was just thinking and you know, I was kind of <coughs> recollecting an experience just about last week, what Prasad mentioned and you know, getting creative brief written was like the what I think I wouldn't say 50 but about 70 percent of the problem and the time taken was so high that you just keep on having iterations and review and that was a large part of any CMO's life to review briefs or you know task the team to get a brief and you know last week you know this this member in my team just came up uh, with a brief within within a day and I was like and, and it was really well written the kind of briefs that people used to write or this particular person, you know, used to write was needed, needed improvement. Let's just keep it at that. But this was really surreal to get this brief out. So I asked, how did you manage that? And he said, you know, I just input it saying how to, how to market blue chip funds to whatever the target segment was. And there was a huge brief the on chat that. The chat did it and he, he, he told me that, you know, it's chat GPT. My next question was that, you know, if you are doing this, my competitor is also doing this. <laughs> 
So there will be the same brief floating in the market. So to which he added that there is a tool, sir, that, you know, that kind of uh, checks it for plagiarism. And this is 90% uh, non-plagiarized. So I think, you know, things are moving in a very different direction. Thanks, Abhijit. Uh, would you like to add your perspective? Uh, yeah, sure. I think because we're talking about business opportunities, I think ONDC is one thing that will definitely change and present a lot of business opportunities. Uh, because I think what UPI did to digital payments, it is going to do to the e-commerce space. And uh, the way ONDC is expected to move, and once we have a government's muscle put behind any initiative, we all know the kind of penetration it can have, and also it affects the human psychology where everyone is more okay to accept that and go ahead with it. Uh, so I think ONDC is going to be huge. And uh, also, with the kind of ambition that ONDC has taken, uh, which is to kind of ensure that the 8% e-com digital penetration that we have today, in the next two years, they want to take it to 25%, I think, which is good news for so many verticals. Uh, there is going to be change for media and entertainment, for sports, uh, for e-com, um, and even ones that are affected because of uh, a lot of people who are going to be doing these transactions, which can even be like travel, etc. So I think a lot of verticals do that. And I think the second thing that I think is commerce media, which is again uh, something that has become the buzzword recently. Uh, with commerce media, uh, what we're doing is that there is retailers' data. And then at the same time, there is an AI, which together gets powered and ensures that you're giving very personalized experience to users these days because it's all about personalizations. Uh, and being able to get that user consent and give them that experience, I think that is also one thing that is definitely going to take over. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. Uh, can we open this forum for the audience here if you want to ask any questions to the panel? Is there any? Moving on, so India's goal is to become 1 trillion USD in digital economy by 2025. And this is built on three pillars of infrastructure, business transformation, and digital commerce, like we are discussing. So how do you envision the futuristic business opportunities for elevated customer experience in addition to revenue growth and competitive advantage? And I will add one more thing. Do you see any limitations in adoption of this? biggest limitation in financial services is trust, right? Uh, whatever happens, uh, uh, when things go down, that is where the financial services leadership or strength comes in, right? When an when economy goes down or when something goes wrong, right? When some frauds are caught, right? So, so one of the biggest things in Web3, which I see as a, as a person in this industry, is that it will generate more trust. It will generate more decentralized way of clearing, decentralized way of tokenization. So, uh, you will see that there are very, very large financial institutions in the country who have not still adopted digital fully, but they continue to be large and they will still growing much better than others, primarily because they generate trust. Right? So, so, in my view, biggest uh, thing that still is lacking in the digital ecosystem in India even today is the value, of, is the amount of trust. Even today, there is too much discussion on uh, cyber fraud is lot. Uh, everybody believes that if it is a paper, the fraud chances are lesser. There are enough research which proves that actually paper fraud chances are higher. Actually, on online fraud chances are lower. But there is a feel to it. So, in my view, uh, Web 3.0 gen should generate more trust. Right? We see a lot of people talk about crypto, and I was not a very good and uh, not a very good understanding of crypto. But but there is a lot of trust issues which causes the delay in growth. Right? So in our industry, I think the biggest thing is about how, how the new technologies will generate trust. When we talk about ONDC, some of these things, UPA, EUP, I think generate more trust. And that is why, while there is so much e-commerce in the country in the last seven, eight years in terms of e-tailing, the, flip, the way Flipkart or Amazons have grown, ONDC will generate more trust, right? So more trust comes, I think the, that will pave the way. So more, more technology in stack should generate more deep trust in the consumers about the whole ecosystem. Thank you. You would like to add perspective? Yeah, I think what Gagan mentioned about trust is, is 
is the opportunity to the opportunity part in your question because I think digitization, digital, customer experience, involvement, high engagement, it all leads to a, a lot of transparency in the transaction, be it onboarding, ongoing, or any engagement uh, with the product. Like, I mean, you know, be it ordering on Swiggy where you actually see where the person is, what's happening, and I have a recourse. In a non-digital framework, that, that experience is, is largely broken. And when it comes to financial services, I mean, the, the largest grouse that a customer has uh, with any financial institution is that they took my money, but I don't know what happened to my money. Or, you know, uh, or when will I get my redemption? Or uh, I, I, I do not have any uh, view on how things are moving. And how easy it is, it is to close an account? Actually. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I think. And uh, so, you know, with this NRI, UPI, NRI is also wanting to invest in India. The biggest, and if you, if you pick up any NRI, the largest uh, entry barrier uh, was that, look, I, I really get scared of the whole documentation slash onboarding process. So digitization helps with it. Of course, uh, large corporates, large uh, companies are still a bit uh, uh, careful where to tread on the digital journey, be it you know, on cloud migration or be it uh, on, on new open architecture-led uh, technologies uh, because of the whole data, transparency, trust part. But I'm sure uh, uh, that is a large opportunity with things like Web 3.0 or other uh, initiatives will get. And I'm sure, you know, Medavi, from an enterprise point of view, can add more light on how things are changing, on getting organizations like ours to be more digital and more nimble. Thank you. So, um, just to add from the limitation perspective, I'll just add two points here. One is, uh, with every ecosystem getting developed, uh, be it, uh, let's assume if I talk about UPI as the ecosystem, it is creating some sort of monopoly or duopoly in our Indian market. Uh, whichever uh, technology we currently talk about, right, when the entire, uh, I would say, wave 1.0, 2.0 happened, uh, the social uh, uh, media when we talk about, the search uh, platforms when we talk about, they have all got into monopolies or do police in some of the scenarios. Now, what adds to that limitation is they basically take care of entire data. When we talk about the platforms which are currently number one, number two in UPI, they have so much of data that they try to control the entire uh, uh, consumer uh, ecosystem, the entire campaigning, the entire reach out program. It gets concentrated. So. How I look at it, if I need to remove that uh, limitation, somewhere what even Rob talked about, Vinod talked about, that somewhere the decentralization has to happen so that the entire customer data, the power which all uh, players of the platform should have with them should not get concentrated with a couple of uh, companies. That's one limitation I will talk about. The second limitation in this entire ecosystem is the customer preference. Currently, we all are talking from our perspective that how exactly we should take uh, this web 3.0 forward to our customers to enhance their experience. But many times what we have observed, at least uh, I understand from the securities perspective or from uh, mutual fund perspective, it is more, it's a financial transaction, but more transactional than emotional. Whereas an industry like life insurance is more emotional than transactional is more long-term in nature than any other financial product, suddenly the customer preferences changes. Uh, they, they believe, that customers believe that, okay, yes, I will look at all the information online, I will check everything online, but when I decide to purchase, I will go to my trusted agent, I think he talked about, Gagan talked about the trust, He's, he will go to that uh, trusted agent, he will go to a trusted relationship manager from a bank and do that transaction. Because if customer preference is not changing and I delve into the entire technology stack 
to improve his customer experience, then there is a challenge. I think what we need to also look into is what exactly customer wants. I might go overboard with my uh, technology, with my experience enhancements, but if customer really wants a physical uh, contact point, a person, a face to interact with, then I think we need to live with that particular point as well. Exactly. So it's more about looking at experience as a starting point and you leverage technology to enable it. Um, anybody would like to add to the perspective? No, nothing. I think Prasad has really mentioned that there is no, no, no role of an avatar to replace the physical agent. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're talking about this year is the year of unlocking the Web3. Web3 leverages peer-to-peer -peer connect and decentralized infrastructure as we all know to deliver use cases, solutions across major applications such as finance, decentralized communities, entertainment and infrastructure. So there would be concepts of blockchain, tokenization, NFT, metaverse, we saw so many examples. What is the unique value propositions you have come across or you think that will enable India to lead on this front? Anybody would want to take this? Our industry so far, I have a limited knowledge still. I think uh, Metaverse is primarily helping so far in my industry only in learning, education and learning. We can use Metaverse significantly to help people understand financial education, but actual transactions in money is still money. Obviously, there can be a lot of virtual experiences, but industry particularly is about real money. So that, ha that has to happen in the real world. Uh, so that's what my limited knowledge is. Yeah, I think, um, as I said, you know, e-com is something that will definitely have with ONDC uh, a huge opportunity. Then also with the 5G penetration, a lot of the media will also grow. Now, if you look at it, there are already so many OTT platforms that are there. Uh, and it's also constantly growing. Now we're hearing about the regional ones that are catering to local dialects so as to actually involve the masses. So each of those industries is actually seeing that opportunity and that is going to change. And it's primarily based on this Indian stack because a large part of them are driven by or at least increasing which is by UPI or ONDC or 5G technology. Thanks. Thanks, Pandala. I'll just add one thing from the overall insurance industry perspective uh, that we all talked about the consumer journey that if I as a customer want to do the life insurance purchase journey. I start with my online application form. I start with uh, KYC. I have income proof document. I have payments. Then I have medicals. Then we have final policy issuance, which is underwriting decision, which finally happens. How I look at it that currently this entire chain of insurance is slightly lengthy. It's time consuming. It's lengthy because it has a lot of physical elements into it. How I look at it, this entire digital stack, which currently we have, and what we are going to have in future, the entire health portal is going to come in. Right? Then uh, our regulator is also putting a lot of energy in terms of uh, uh, simplifying the processes. What will happen today from policy uh, search to payment, that entire ecosystem has got created. But from payment to policy issuance, which includes medical, which is the biggest uh, 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 challenging process what we currently have, I think that can get solved with the health portal what uh, government is currently building. And if that gets exposed to various companies and can act as a repository of health information of most of the customers who have interacted with that ecosystem, I think that will simplify that payment to issuance leg as well. And overall customer experience end-to-end -end, will become far smoother and enriching for the customers. Yeah, so it's about creating journeys which are differentiated and personalized for your consumer segment. Yeah, that's the key to the experience. So, yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's covered. From our industry perspective, uh, there's immense opportunity on Web3 because in any, any investment decision, there are multiple people involved. It is not like you just go and invest on impulse and the consumer is deciding on his or her own. So there are family members or you know friends, relatives or that smart 
uncle who always makes money in the stock market uh, and you know uh, the other part is advice is also you know on the tap you know today you ask anybody what to do on the market there will be i mean everybody and anybody will have a view so i would say the right advice or the trusted advice coming through uh, 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 the right set of people uh, is a large opportunity apart from content or awareness on the funnel side and that's that's really the key because you know we all need somebody or some sounding board and here the sounding board is not emotional but very very rational uh, because it's it, it involves money returns irrs goals etc so some kind of a some kind of an interactive uh, advisory calculator which helps a customer decide to invest so that's a large opportunity of course uh, a lot of these tools are available today are fragmented but what web 3.0 can do is kind of you know seamlessly build them into the discovery purchase and uh, ongoing engagement uh, or uh, journeys of customers with their investments yeah thank you so actually to summarize the trends that we are seeing will emerge in future are more like customer convenience through digital transactions evolution of e-commerce through d2c D- 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 experiential marketing from basically web3 and extended reality and we saw few examples and decentralized local commerce which is more hyper local with this we are coming towards the end of this panel discussion thank you members for such an engaging and insightful discussion hope you all enjoyed it good day <laughs>